Thank you so much for joining us here at North Rock Church, where we exist to see lives redefined by being filled with life in Christ. If you have any questions or want to learn more about us, just stop by our website at northrocksa.com or you can follow us on Instagram at northrocksa. We would love for you to stay connected with us throughout the week. With that being said, let's take a look at this week's message. I know that God has given this incredible church incredible big vision for the next 10 years. There's something that you have that the San Antonio God sees needs. God didn't call us to be settlers. He called us to be dreamers. Every one of these rooftops represent a family, a people who need me. We have this incredible vision to reach our city. God sees a city that needs Him. What's up, everybody? Good to see you on Vision Weekend 2019. And uh, I am excited about today. We're interrupting our, our regularly scheduled sermon series, My Big Fat Mouth. Uh, to bring you some breaking news, and I'll share that with you here in just a little bit. Uh, we we, we kind of pressed pause on the series last week as well because it was Mother's Day, and it's kind of weird to do my big fat mouth on Mother's Day, um, and we're doing it again today, uh, but we will return to my big fat mouth next weekend, so make sure you're back in the house next weekend for week number three of that incredible series about the power of our, our words. Um, I'm looking forward to this weekend, though. The scriptures tell us in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. No vision, the people perish. And, and God has given um, this church and this team some incredible vision for our future. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you here in just a moment. But first, how many of you have ever been involved in planning a child's birthday party? Planning a child's birthday party. Your kid, your grandkids, yep. Um, we've, we've done a little bit of that as well. When, when, when Specifically when my boys were younger, like when they were really young, we could have like parties like in the park. Um, before they before they recognized uh, that oh, little Jimmy, they haven't party at the laser tag. Um, before all that, like we could just go to the park. You know what I'm saying? And, and they don't know. It's just there. There's a playscape there. There's a picnic table. There's cake and ice cream. And and so in those days, it was just like invite anybody you want to. Invite the whole the whole Sunday school class, or invite your entire class at school. Just invite everybody. It didn't really it didn't really matter how many people came. But when they started wanting to have them like at Top Golf or at Laser Tag. Well, now I got to pay per head. Well, you ain't inviting everybody. You just ain't, you ain't inviting the whole team. Like you go, you got to rank your friends. Like who? Right? It's a very unhealthy, very unhealthy exercise. <clears throat> oh, so you want to write invite Sam? Okay. Where did that one, scale of one to ten? Where's Sam? Where's Sam? I don't want to do that. Where's Sam on a scale of one to ten? Maybe a six. He ain't coming. He ain't coming. Nope. Oh, you want to invite Jimmy? Okay, okay. So like if you're walking through the hall at school and you see Jimmy coming the other direction, is it like a high five? What's up, bro? Is it like a chest bump or is it just more like a what's up? Uh, well, it's kind of more of a what's up? Well, he ain't coming either then. He's he not coming either because he's he not making the cut. I can only pay for so many and we're going to have like top tier. Only, only the top tier can come to this Party. You feel my pain if you've ever had to pay those top golf or laser, whatever it, it might be. Uh, but unlike us, I want to declare to you today from the beginning, unlike your parties and your kids' parties, Jesus wants everybody to come to his party. So like he's already paid for everybody and he wants everybody to come to his party. From the very beginning of time, God's plan was to save the world, everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave, his only son, the world. Jesus said in Luke chapter 19, verse 9, talking to a man named Zacchaeus, he said, today salvation has come to your house for the son of man. And then Jesus stated his purpose for, for even being on the earth. The son of man came to seek and save the lost. Everybody is invited to his party. And here's what's so mind-blowing. Here's what's so mind-blowing to me, and I think it always will be, and, and I think that it always should be. God chose us. He chose you. He chose me. He chose the church 
as his vehicle to bring everybody to the party. He chose the church as his vehicle to reach our world with the message of, of hope, the message of grace, the message of salvation. You are God's plan A, and there is no plan B. So like we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. I could preach an entire service about how God chose the church as his vehicle to save the world. I don't have time to do that. You've just got to take my word for it. But that's why at North Rock, we will always keep reaching. We will continue to serve. We will always keep giving. We will keep working until Jesus runs this town. And every single weekend, we're throwing a party right here in this house, 1278 North Loop 1604 East. And at this party that Jesus wants everybody to come to, that everybody is invited to, we're going to introduce people to Jesus. We're going to worship together. We're going to have fun together. Hearts are going to be healed together. Lives are going to be redefined. That's what we do weekend and week out here in this house. Jesus was at a dinner party one day, and someone looked at him and said, it's going to be fun when we get to heaven. We're going to have a big banquet in heaven. And Jesus is like, well, funny you should say that, because I got a story that I want to tell you. And Jesus started telling a story to help illustrate a biblical principle of truth. Jesus would do that. We call them parables. It would just kind of be a real life, kind of a modern day story to help people understand a truth that he was trying to teach. Jesus said, and in, in, Luke John, in Luke 14, verse 16, he replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast, and he sent out many invitations. Verse number 17, when the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. So Jesus starts telling the story of a man who was holding a big party, a banquet, and this, this incredible, you know, festive time at his home. And by the way, the man in Jesus' story is not just any man, but he represents God. And the house in this story is not just any house, but it represents God's house. So the first thing that we're going to extract from this parable today, if you're taking notes, you can write this down, is that God's house is more like a refreshing party than a depressing duty. God's house should be more like a party than a duty. There have been times in my life where I have felt like church was a depressing duty, but it should not be that way. This should be a life-giving place that is the source of joy, that is the source of celebration. I've heard somebody one day trying to describe our church service to someone else, and I happened to be standing there, and they said, it's like there's this like loud, awesome music, and, and I got to be honest with you, when I hear people describe our church as loud, and this is our little secret, this is between you and me, I love it, I love it. Even when people say, it's too loud, I still say, oh, I'm so sorry, but deep in, deep inside, I love it. I, I love it when people call our church just a little bit, a little bit rowdy. A few years ago, somebody said, is it like always like this? And I was like, no, sometimes it's way louder and way crazier. <laughs> David said in Psalm 122 and 1, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the Lord's house. You should be wanting to come to God's house. I truly believe this place should be full of music, full of laughter, full of smiles and uplifting community. It should be a life-giving place. Have you ever been to a boring party? You ever been to a boring party? Like a co-ed baby shower or something? When did this happen? When did people start thinking that the husband should come to the baby shower too? Oh, and bring your husband. It's a co-ed shower. I'm not coming. I'm not coming to your baby. I love you. I'm going to love that baby, but I don't want to come to the baby shower. I'll be like that, that Buffalo Wild Wings guy who's sitting there just looking for a way out. Like I'm going to grab a mattress off the bed, throw it out the window and dive out the window. I got to get out of here. I got to get out. But church should never be that way. That's not how church should be. There's, a, there's enough junk. There's enough hell out there that when we come in this house, man, we should experience some heaven. It should be uplifting and life-giving. And I'm thankful for a life-giving church. Hey, 
where we can leave with our head held high. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm certainly not where I used to be. And I'm going to keep coming in this house week after week after week and allow God to work on me. I'm going to keep showing up to the party every single week. Jesus continues his party parable in, in verse number 16. And, and, and after the, the servants went and started handing out invites, he said, but, but, but they all began making excuses. One person said, I can't come. I've just I just bought a field and I got to inspect it. Verse 19, somebody, another said, I, I just bought five pairs of oxen. I got me a new car, got me a new boat, got me a new jet ski, and, and I want to try them out. Please, please excuse me. Verse number, verse number 20, somebody said, I, I just got married, so, so I can't come. And it's not in here, but I think it was extracted. Somebody else said, I just had a baby, so you're probably not going to see me for six months. Verse 21, the servant returned and told his master what they had said, and his master was furious. Furious. And I'm not going to spend much time here because it's not really what this, this day is about. Plus, I'm preaching to the choir. But you need to understand that God takes his party invitations seriously. God's serious about his party invitations. We've all been invited to the party. And it's, it's literally mind-blowing, the things that we use, the excuses that people use they could come up with not to show up to the party. What we really need is a good case of FOMO. You know, you know what FOMO is? Fear of missing out, right? Crazy syndrome in modern culture, basically brought on by, you know, the social media craze. And it's where you're sitting with the people that you love or people that you care about, but you can't stop thinking about the people that you, you could be with. And you're, you're, you're on the gram and you're on Snapchat. You just, I just, I could, I could have been, I, I wonder what they're doing. And you feel like you're missing out of, 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 because you're seeing, you know, their highlight reel on, on social media. And it's very unhealthy syndrome. But as it relates to church, I think it's pretty healthy. We should all have a good case of missing out. I, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out on what God's doing here every weekend. Like every weekend, well, we could do this. Well, we could, but I'm going to go get my church on first because I don't want to miss out. You know what I'm saying? Like, like tonight is aftermath. Students, middle schoolers, high schoolers, mamas, daddies, middle schoolers, get your kids to the house tonight. They don't need to miss out. They're going to have a, some fun. They're going to have food. They're going to have message. They're going to have worship. It's going to be a great night. They're going to miss out if they're not in the house tonight. Get them to the house Tonight, there's a party. There's a party going on. I have to be there. Got to be there. It's also clearly implied in this parable that there are people in the house, servants in the house that are helping prepare the banquet, right? They're, they're, they're setting the table. They're preparing the food. They're passing out the invitations. They are, they are getting the place ready for the guests to come. They're getting the table ready. They're getting the seats ready, the, the, the place settings ready for the guests to show up to the house. I know it's party planning season because, again, it's graduation season. And um, uh, last year, I was, we were planning a graduation party. We had a graduate last year. Uh, this year, it's, I have a kid who'll be 16 in, in, in a couple of weeks, so we're, we're planning the 16-year-old party. We can't really plan the party, though, uh, because his, his high school baseball team, the Reagan Rattlers, just keep winning and progressing in the playoffs. They, they beat Austin Westlake yesterday in the, in the bumper game of their three-game series. It was pretty tense and pretty crazy and pretty exciting, uh, but I just found out this morning that my kid's in the newspaper today, so I thought that was awesome. I don't, I'll have to start getting the paper again, I guess, um, but, 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 but because they keep winning, we're having trouble. When are we going to do this 16-year-old party? When are we going to do it? Well, it, we're not going to lose, so we can do a party. Um, but but, 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 but we, we're working on that. What I love about North Rock is every single week, there are people working behind the scenes as well as some in the spotlight, preparing a table, preparing a place for you to come and sit. There are Kids Rock teachers and, and check-in people that are helping get your kids checked in. They're preparing the table. They're, they're, they're getting the house ready so that your child can hear about Jesus. Somebody did their part so that you could have a place to park, so that you could have some coffee to drink, so that you could have something to munch on, so that you could have a comfortable place to sit. Our band did their part by preparing and practicing our, our production team, people working behind 
behind the scenes preparing the house for people to come to this party. And I want you to hear me. You can write this down. We're never any closer to God than when we are serving in his house. We're never any closer to God than when we are serving in his house. You might invest in something in this culture that will bring you more money, but you will never invest in anything in our world that will bring you more fulfillment or purpose than when you invest in God's kingdom, than when you invest in the church. Man, one of the greatest joys in life is to set the table so somebody can have a seat in God's house. Growth Track is, is actually going on right now, and it's happening again in a couple of weeks. And Growth Track here at North Rock is where you, where you get connected, where you find out about North Rock, and where you can also join our, our rock star team. Our rock stars are what we call the people who serve around here and, and volunteer their time, again, so that you can have a comfortable seat, so that you can have a distraction-free environment, and we'd love to have you on the team. Again, there's nothing like it. You're never any closer to God than when you are serving in his house, and you have an opportunity to make a difference, an eternal difference. In the lives of people, hundreds, thousands of people every week right here in this house. Now, let me show you what, what happened, happened next. And I, I love this section because I think it speaks so deeply to the heart of God. After some refused to come to the party in verse number, verse number 21, the master said, go. Everybody say, go. Go, go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and invite the poor the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. There is still room for more. There is still room for more. Like we got a, we got a lot here at the party. It's a great party. We're having a lot of fun. A lot of food being served, passed out. A lot of nourishment taking place. People being blessed, people having a good time, but there's still room for more. There's still room for more. Verse number 23 says, so his master said, then go, go out into the country lanes behind the hedges, urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. God wants his party packed, y'all. He wants his house full. He notices every empty chair because he notices every empty heart in this city. And he knows that if we can get those empty hearts into empty chairs, he can make an eternal difference in their life. God knows that every chair represents a chance for someone to encounter Jesus, for someone to encounter grace, for someone to encounter his love. He recognizes every empty heart, every dream that's been shattered, every life that's been emptied of passion, that's been emptied of joy. And he knows that if we can get them in the house, he can bring hope. My, my, my my pastor used to tell me years ago, son, church is a chance. Church is a chance. If you just get him into God's house and then let him go to work, church is a chance. I can't bring life change in anybody's life, but I know the one who can. I, all I do is prepare the place. All I do is create empty, heart, empty chairs for empty hearts. But that's what we do here at North Rock Church. We know the one who can feel that emptiness. We know the one who can solve that longing inside of those hearts. And so we work and do everything that we can to provide a place for every empty heart in our region. You know what? Um, there, there are, I, I was in, in a meeting just a while back with the mayor of San Antonio and actually heard him say that we have now nearly in our region, 2.3 million people in our region. That's not in San Antonio proper, but in our region, 2.3 million in, in the region. Did you know that on any given weekend, there's about 1,700 churches with about 345,000 people attending? So on any given weekend, there are nearly 2 million people who are not connected to Jesus. Any given weekend. Guys, this is the number that drives me. This is the number that fuels what we're doing here at North Rock Church. I'm excited about the party that we throw every week, but there's still room for more. 
This is the number that caused me to move my family to this city 10 years ago. This is, this is the number that caused me to pull my kids out of their school and out of their sports programs and leave a great church family that I was a part of and move to a city where I didn't know anybody to plant a church that I didn't know how we were going to do it. I'm still not sure how we did it, and, and I'm not sure how we're going to keep doing it, but I just know that we've got God on our side, and with God on our side, how can we lose? And that we've got to put a dent in this number. And you might say, well, there's a lot of people. I mean, I drove past some big churches. I mean, yeah, you know, was driving, driving like, y'all, we're not even putting a dent in this number. We're just barely scratching the surface. We're just barely scratching the surface. This is the number that causes me to look at people like, when they say, you know, like, when's it ever going to be enough? Like, how, 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 when are you going to stop reaching for more? I mean, when are we going to start just trying to make the church grow more and more? Can't you just settle? No. No, I, don't even, I really don't even understand the context of that question, but I guess if I were to try to answer the question, when's it going to be enough for North Rock, I guess the answer would be when this number is zero. Like when this number is zero, then I guess we'd be like, okay, but as long as there are people that need Jesus, we're not going to stop. As long as there are marriages that need to be saved, we're not going to stop. As long as there are addicts who need to find freedom, we will never stop. We are just not going to stop. This is who we are. This is what drives us. This is what drives us. This is what, this is what drives us. This is what drives us. There are a lot of great churches in the city, but we want to do our part to put a dent in the darkness in our region. I want to do my part to, to see San Antonio reached for Jesus Christ. We are crazy blessed that God gave us this, this property, this location. And I mean, I love, I, again, I pinch myself when I drive by. I think I have a graphic here that kind of shows where we are. And, and um, I, I, I pinch myself when I drive by on the highway. I'm a bit overwhelmed that, that, that we are here. But if I'm, if I'm going to be honest with you, the truth is <clears throat> we know that we cannot reach everybody from this location. And, and, and here's why. Here's what I want you to know about the way people attend church in 2019. I was talking to a, a, a church guru, church plant multi-site guru, well-known uh, gentleman um, who's been doing, doing church growth for a uh, you know, better part of 30, 40 years, really. And uh, he was telling me back in November that 75%, recent research has shown that 75% of people who attend church attend a church that's within 15 minutes of their house. 15 minutes. 75% of people who attend attend a church within 15 minutes of their house. <clears throat> and if you look at people who are actually connected, like engaged, like they're in a small group or they're serving, that percentage goes up to over 90% living within 15 minutes of that church. So we know that as amazing as this location is, as strategic as I believe this location is, we'll only be able to, to, to reach so many people from where we are. But if we can't get the party, if we can't get people to come to the party, I should say, we're just going to take the party to the people. And we've been dreaming about that. We've been talking about that. We've been praying about that. We've been praying about seeing North Rock campuses pop up all over our region, from, from Bulverde to Broadway, from Shirts to Southtown, from SeaWorld to Six Flags, and everything in between. We've been dreaming about, about seeing North Rock campuses, and, and we talked about this last year a lot, and, and the previous year, and in the last about six or seven months, we identified some five, about five or six really strategic hotspots that would be great places for us to start and launch our first campus. And we narrowed that down to a couple of different locations. And, and one of those, both of them are promising. One of those locations is uh, fabulous. And we'll, we'll be praying and dreaming about that uh, potentially uh, for, for 2020 and, and or beyond that. Um, but I'm excited to announce to you today that we're taking the party to the people on September 15th, 2019th. We plan to launch our second campus in the heart of the Alamo City. 
just south of the airport. We're we're not going out first. We're going to go in first. Just south of the airport, just north of downtown, just off the Broadway corridor, close to 281. Honestly, it's probably about three or four minutes from the 281 corridor and about, about three minutes, maybe not even that much, about two minutes from the 410 corridor. We're going to be launching our second campus in the Alamo Heights Middle School called Alamo Heights Junior School in Alamo Heights. And we are, we finally know where we're going and we're excited about about it, and I'm pumped to be able to share this with you today. It's technically not even in Alamo Heights uh, city limits. It's in San Antonio. It's just in their school district using the, one of their schools, and we are excited about this opportunity. Man, this is going to provide us a way to replicate ourselves in a very cost-effective way, in a quick way and a cost-effective way, and, and take what we have here at North Rock, this culture, down into that region, about 25, 20, 20 minutes away, depending on what traffic's doing, away from here, right in the middle of neighborhoods. I mean, surrounded by neighborhoods, people everywhere in that region, people that need Jesus everywhere in that region. And what's awesome about doing it this way Uh, Planning a church out of a church like this is that we're not having to create culture from scratch. We're actually replicating. We're just going to we're just going to transplant it. We're going to take it right out of this house and we're going to put it there. It's going it's going to feel like North Rock. It's going to sound like North Rock. It's going to look like North Rock. It's even going to smell like North Rock. Like it is going to be North Rock in Alamo Heights. It's going to be North Rock and Alamo Heights Junior School, and I, I'm pumped about it. We'll have the same life-giving environment, the same no perfect people allowed vibe, the same energy, the same passion, the same marriage-saving, addiction-breaking power and presence of God will be there. Many of the same faces. You're going to be able to see the same faces in the house. Here's how the service will work. It's actually kind of cool. Of course, it'll have its own live band and own live campus pastor and stage host and all that. But what's cool is we're literally going to be able to sync up what our, our, what, our, what our band is doing here and the same exact songs that we're doing here, not just the same songs, but literally at the same time. We're going to be doing the same song at the same time in two different locations. And then, of course, they'll have their own ministry moment. They'll have their own uh, service host. Um, but the sermon, the sermon is actually going to be the exact same sermon as well. Like it's going to be simulcast, like it'll be happening in real time. So I'll be able to preach right here on the stage or whoever's preaching here on the stage won't just be preaching here, but at the same time, you're going to be preaching down there in Alamo Heights junior school. And uh, so the exact same sermon happening at the same time pumped about that. It's amazing, honestly, how far technology has come and what we're going to be, what we're going to be able to do. And, and just know that God, God intends to take unprecedented territory in this region through this church. And what we're doing here is we're creating more empty seats for more empty hearts we're, we, because we won't stop until Jesus runs this town. We're just not going to stop until Jesus runs this town. There are people that need him, and we're going to keep reaching. We're going to keep reaching. We're going to keep reaching. Also today, I want to not only inform you of the location, and actually this is happening, y'all, in in four months. Everybody say four months. Yeah. One, two, and three, and four. In four months, it's happening. It will be here before, like you come back from summer, and it's here. So there's a lot of work to be done between now and then. I want to introduce to you, though, the campus pastor of that campus who's going to be leading this campus, uh, none other than Mr. Winston Harris and Stephanie Harris, his wife. Come on, Winston and Steph. Boom, baby. (laughs) These are amazing, amazing, gorgeous people, and they're not, they're not, we didn't ask them to be the campus pastors because they're so gorgeous. We really asked them because of the cool shoes that Winston wears. Come on, Bob, show them. Show them them shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I might wear some unique shoes, but I I, I can't quite get away with house shoes on stage yet. But one of these days, brother, one of these days, I just got to have you help me with the outfit. But one of these days, this this couple is amazing, y'all. We've we've watched them over the last few years um, since they've been at North Rock. And uh, they, they came from within. Um, we, we hired 
Winston right out of this secular uh, segment and into North Rock Church. And it's amazing what God has done in his life over the last year and a half on staff here. And I've watched God use him in unbelievable ways. And I've watched his openness to God's direction. He, he has this insatiable desire to learn. He craves uh, knowledge, spiritual knowledge. He craves to grow. So he's always open to what God has for him next. And when you have someone that has a desire like that, it's incredible what God can do with their life. Um, I, I watched this couple rearrange their, their plans for their future because of God's calling on their life. And um, it's a big deal, like a bigger deal probably than I even realized that it is. But I watched them, they, like they had a course set, and they realized that God had some, some different plans, and they said, okay, God, I don't know how this is going to look like, but I'm trusting you, and I'm going to just kind of lean on you in this. And when somebody's willing to rearrange their future for the purpose and the call of God, the sky is the limit about what God can do in them and through them. And so yeah, this... This couple is an amazing couple that, that we can get behind, that we can support, and that we can bless, and we'll be praying over them and all that stuff as we get closer uh, to launch date, but we are thrilled to have this couple leading this Alamo Heights campus. Y'all make some noise one more time for Winston and Steph. And here's where you come in. Here's where you come in, because I, I, I need something from you. You know that. God needs something from you. We are, we are contributors to God's call. We are not just consumers. This is your church. This is not my church. This is your church. This is, this is our church. This is why we dry the countertop whenever it's wet in the bathroom. This is why we reach down and pick up trash off the floor, because this is our church. We are, we are not just attenders. We are, we are owners of this place. This is our house. So here's what I need from you. First of all, I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Pray that, that God will help us fill up this launch team. Pray that, pray that God will, will, will open hearts and minds in that region. People around the airport and, and, and those all the way over to, you know, toward Austin Highway and, 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 and over on the, the east side, I'm sorry, the west side of 281 and down south into Alamo Heights, that God would open those hearts to whenever they get that banquet invitation, when they, whenever they get that party invitation, that they would be open to come to the party and allow God to work in their life. So pray, pray. Number two, give, give, give. While this is a cost-effective way of multiplying and kind of replicating ourselves, um, it still costs, and it still costs quite a bit. In order to create the North Rock experience in, in a school, it's, it, it costs. And so I'm inviting you to talk to God and ask him what he might have you do, what he might have you give, be it, be it sacrificially, or maybe you've just got, maybe you've got abundance. Maybe it's sacrificial, but maybe it's abundance for you. Talk to God and ask, and then respond and be willing to give toward launching this campus. Honestly, in the next month, in the next month, before the middle of June, we, we need God to come through with some financial blessings, some financial miracles. I know that he uses his people. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills, but he also can use you. And we'll be blessed as a byproduct, but you're the one that's really going to be blessed when you, when you give. If you, if you choose to give, all you have to do is any of our giving outlets, just choose legacy. Choose legacy and and it will go towards our Alamo Heights campus over the next four months, all right? But then go. So pray, give, and go. Go. I'm asking you to join this Alamo Heights launch team. I'm asking you to. I'm literally asking you to leave this house and join that launch team. Not right now, but in September, as I'm saying. Join that team. We're going to be... Again, we're, we're, we're transplanting culture. So what that means is we're going to have a launch team. Our goal is 200 plus, like a minimum of 200, 200 plus from this house transplanted there. Staff members, volunteers, attenders, uh, uh, you know, rock stars, kids ministry, 200 plus. So that actually means probably you. That, that probably means that God is wanting you to go. So I want you to be open to that. I want you to be open to listening to God 
and, and, and responding to that, to, that, to that prod to go. For some, it'll, it'll be very easy. Like you live in that area or you drive past that area. You love Winston already and you just want to follow him around. And It's, it's going to be very easy. Some of you, you just like new. You want to be part of launching something new that excites you. And, and it, it, it would me, but just being part of something new, seeing it take shape and, 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 and begin, to, begin to turn into something amazing, just being part of that will drive you. But for others, it may be a sacrifice. I'm still asking you to go. I'm still asking you to go. Go even when it's inconvenient. Go even whenever it might not make a lot of sense. It might even be a little bit uncomfortable, but I, I still, I'm still challenging you to go because it's, it's not about... It's not about you. It's about people like you who need Jesus. Someone went before you and prepared a way, prepared a place. They worked, (laughs) they bled, they sweated to prepare a place so that you could come and sit and enjoy Jesus. Now, there are empty hearts all over this region that need you to go and to prepare a place for them. So go. The way that you find out about more about this Alamo Heights launch and even join the team is the easy way is to go to our website, go to the North Rock website. There's Alamo Heights page there. And uh, you can find out information as well as there's a form that you can fill out and uh, choose to join the team or, 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 or say that you're willing to attend, be part of the launch team, serve, all that stuff. You can take care of that right there online. You can take care of that in Growth Track. When you, if you haven't been through Growth Track and you go through Growth Track, you can say, I want to be part of the Alamo Heights launch team. Uh, but, but this is pretty big, and, and I want to share this with you. Look at your neighbor and say, this is big. This is big. This is big. This is big. This Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, we are having our initial Alamo Heights campus interest meeting right here at the house. So this Wednesday, this Wednesday, like in three days, at 645, we're having our first Alamo Heights campus interest meeting right here in our growth track room off of the foyer. At this interest meeting, we're going to, we'll give you a little more clarity about what it'll look like and, and uh, share some vision for the area. Um, additionally, we'll, 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 we'll have some town hall time, I hope, where we can take some questions. If anybody has any questions that, that we feel like we have answers to, we will answer as many questions as possible. That is this Wednesday at 6 45. If it piques your interest at all, or you just love North Rock and you just want to come hear what it's all about, 645 this Wednesday in the Growth Track Room. All right, we'll take care of your kids. We will have child care there for those that are wondering that. We'll also have some snacks because that's a hungry time of the day. I know that's a hungry, hungry time of the day. Um, back in January at our 10 year anniversary, uh, my, my pastor from Austin, Pastor. Johnson was here, and he preached an incredible sermon that day, but he, he talked in his sermon about some visions that God had given Ezekiel. Ezekiel's an Old Testament book, and in this book, Ezekiel writes about visions that he received from God about God's people, and, and Pastor talked about some of that, but the climax of, of the vision that Ezekiel received was of, of river that was flowing, uh, uh, waters that were flowing out of the temple. Let me, let me just read it to you, and I, I hope that you can kind of get a picture here and understand why I'm, I'm wanting to share this today. Ezekiel said, I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple. So he sees water flowing out of God's house, okay? See it? Water's flowing out of God's house. Skipping down to verse number five. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river. So it started as a stream, but now this, this water that's flowing out of God's house has become a river that, that, that I could not cross because the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that, that no one could cross. So this mighty, raging river, Ezekiel, is seeing coming out of God's house. Verse number six. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? And he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on either side of the river. So he sees trees growing on the side of the river. Verse number eight. Watch this. He said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. 
swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there. Creatures will live wherever the river flows. Large numbers of fish because the water flows there. I want you to get a picture of a river of life flowing out of this house into areas barren and broken and deserted places all over the city. Now it happens every week as God's people, as we the church, leave this house. We take the river with us. But what we're doing with this campus is we are providing a channel for God's, for the river of life, for God's presence, God's power to flow through. A channel directly to Alamo Heights. A channel directly to that airport region. A channel into other areas of the city as, as we progress so that where things are barren, where hearts are dry, where spirits are dehydrated, the water of life, the river of life can bring nourishment, can bring satisfaction, can bring fulfillment, can bring hope, can bring purpose, can bring life. And everywhere the river flows, there is life. It makes the salt water fresh so where the river flows, everything will live. Where the river flows, everything will live. Here, here's the deal. I'm not being presumptuous as if North Rock has the, all of the answers. We actually can't do anything. As I said earlier, he's the one that brings the increase. I don't have any answers. I just have Jesus. I don't have any special power. I just have Jesus. And I want to share him with our city. I want to share him with our region, not just a 15 minute, you know, circle. I want to share him with this entire city. I want to share him with shirts. I want to, I want to share him with Helotes. I want to share him with New Braunfels. I want to share him with Southtown. I want the river to flow out of this house into every corner, every region of the city. I understand that there are great churches all over this place. But as I, sh as I showed you earlier, y'all, we're just scratching the surface. And we have to do our part to put a dent in the darkness in this region. That's why we're here. And that's what we're going to do. Wherever the river flows, there is life. There is life. And maybe you sit in this room today feeling a little bit dehydrated yourself. A dehydrated heart sends desperate messages. You know, when, you're, when, you're, when your body is dehydrated, when it's thirsty, and you, your mouth's dry, you know what I'm saying? You, you, know. you get very dehydrated. You get, you get a headache. Headache. Other things start happening to, to your body. Strange things because your body's dehydrated, so it's sending messages. You need to put water in me. You need to put water in me. Well, dehydrated hearts do the same thing. It's the same thing. A lot of times we don't recognize those messages for what they are. But that quick temper. You say, God, oh, why am I so irritated today? Everybody's just ticking me off. You might even say something else. You, 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 just, you, you, have, you have anxiety. I'm just, I'm just nervous. I'm just scared. I don't even know what I'm scared about. I'm just nervous about everything. Dehydrated hearts send desperate messages. That, that, that thing where you can't keep a healthy relationship and you're angry at yourself because you're constantly messing up relationships. What's wrong with me? It's probably a dehydrated heart. And what you need to do is you need, you need to drink from this river and let it bring you back to life. Jesus said one day to a large group of people, he stood up in the streets with people everywhere and he yelled at the top of his lungs. And he said, if any man is thirsty... Let him come unto me and drink. Of course, everybody, everybody really looked like they were thirsty. But Jesus wasn't talking about this kind of water. He was talking about that kind of water. He knows what he can do with a dehydrated heart, with a parched spirit. He knows the nourishment that he can bring and, and the hope that he can bring back to that, that heart that feels hopeless. 
He knows the joy he can bring back into that spirit that feels like they will never smile again. He knows what he can do. He knows what the river can do. But it's up to us to choose to drink. I could die of thirst while I was standing in the river if I don't drink. And a lot of people will do that. They'll be standing, like the river's in this house today. I mean, God's presence is in this room today. But you could die of thirst if you don't choose to drink. Choose to drink. It's up to you. You need him today? Do you need something today? It's vision weekend, but hey, right here in this moment, God wants to do something special for somebody. Close your eyes. If you don't mind, bow your head. Let me, let me pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for your power, your presence in the room. I love what I feel today. I love the challenge and the excitement of something new and fresh. And I'm glad that I'm, I'm part of something that is moving. It's not stagnant, but that's flowing. Lord, right now, I pray that your presence would just be real in this, in this room to everybody, everybody in this place. God, specifically those who are feeling dry, those who might feel like they're parched a bit. It's just been busy. It's been crazy and chaotic, and their world's just kind of turned upside down. Maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's high schoolers who are about to graduate, and they're paranoid, and they're, they're fearful of their future, or college students who are thinking about you know, real life about to slap them in the face, or maybe it's parents who who are on the, on the edge of empty nest and they're nervous about what that's going to look like. Or maybe it's, it's, it's someone who's wrestling with an addiction, Lord, who, who thought that they had it kicked and, and they, it kind of fell off the wagon in the last few days or last few weeks. Lord Jesus, parched hearts, dehydrated spirits. Right now, God, I pray that your spirit would just flow. God, we open our hearts up. To, we open our minds up to you. And we invite you to move in this place. Move in our hearts. We embrace, God, your presence. We receive it, God. We receive what you want to give to us today. We want to take a drink from that river that's flowing, that river of life. In Jesus' name. As I continue to pray here, if you're in this room and you are not in a relationship with Jesus, hey, this is, this is your moment. This is your time. Don't, don't go a moment longer without taking that step of faith. If you've never surrendered your life to him, or maybe you know that you need to rededicate your life to him. You need to recommit your life to him. I'm going to pray a prayer of surrender. And um, I'd love to know who wants to be included in that prayer. Maybe, maybe you're doing it for the first time, or you're recommitting your life to him. But with nobody looking around, right where you're seated, all heads bowed, eyes closed. If you'd like to be included in this prayer of surrender, I'm starting over. I'm making a fresh start today. Will you throw your hand in the air right now? Jonathan, include me in that prayer. I need to start over today. I need to start over. Come on, hold it high. Beautiful. Hold them high. Leave them there. Thank you. Thank you. Hold them high. That's incredible, y'all. Leave them there if you don't mind. Thank you. Wait, way back here. Thank you. That's incredible. Down here. Awesome. That's incredible. I'm starting over today. Yes, yes, yes. Back here. Thank you. All right, you can put your hands down. I'm going to pray a simple prayer of surrender. I invite everybody in this room to pray it along with me in your own words. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. On this amazing day, I'm starting over and I am following you. I invite you to be the Savior of my life. Forgive me for my sins, God. Make my life clean like only you can. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you gave your life for me and that you rose from the grave. And I'm making a fresh start today with you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray.